Welcome to Look Behind the Look, the new podcast that examines iconic looks in film, television, music, and fashion history. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok. Hello, and welcome to Look Behind the Look. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok, and today we are talking about candy. Candy is a new limited series on Hulu, and it takes us back to the late 70s to a real crime that shocked Texas along with the rest of the nation. Candy Montgomery stood accused of murdering one of her best friends and a fellow parishioner at the church they both attended. Now, I'm not going to tell you everything that happens, though it's pretty straightforward. It, it opens with where it ends. <laughs> but I am going to tell you that Jessica Beale, who plays Candy, is incredible in this. And the transformations executed by the hair and makeup departments are extremely well done. In particular, the ones for Melanie Linsky and Jessica Beale, who play the two lead women. That's what we talk about the most in this episode with Katie Ballard, the hair department head. And she has some great stories and she shares with you all the detail that went into these wigs. And it's a really great conversation. Watch the show, let me know what you think. And enjoy this episode with Katie Ballard and I. He's married. I know, but... Don't I deserve more? Candy, we were so close and... I've just been so busy. She knows. Something terrible has happened. It's Betty. She's dead. Hi, Katie. How are you? I am um, so happy you're on the show. And I, I see that you're in a trailer here. Is that where you are? I am. Can you tell yes. us what show you're working on right now? Or? Uh, Currently working on, oh, it's working under the title of Friend of the Family, uh, but it's with one of our producers from Candy, actually, oh, two of our producers from Candy, Nick and Costa and uh, Alex Headland are, are producing this one. So I had such a good time on Candy that awesome. I just asked them if I could keep, stay along for the ride. Can I stay? <laughs> Can I stay? <laughs> Yeah, I would too. These are people to definitely hit your wagon to. What a great show Candy is. I am sure you're totally excited about it because it turned out, have you gotten a chance to see it yet? I have. Yes, I, I have been lucky enough to be plugged into our, our dailies where they're putting in the final cuts as they go through the network and all of that. So I've been keeping an eye on everything and just trying to stay up to date with what's happening with it fantastic. It's so good. I at first was like, oh, this story keeps being done. You know, like what's the, what's the, because it was Barbara Hershey the, for the first one. Right. Is that right? I never saw that movie. Was it like a movie of the week or something? It was a, a made for TV movie. Right. Okay. And then did you get a chance to see that one? Did you guys all have to watch it as a class assignment? <laughs> I didn't, but I did watch it because I'm a nerd. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would too. I would want to see any and all candies. Absolutely. I, okay, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to dig that up for sure because this is a super interesting character, as you well know. And so, can can you tell me a little bit about how you came to this project? Uh, my agent actually got wind of it in, I think in 2021, mm -hmm. uh, and just mentioned it to me and knew that it would be something I would be very interested in because I'm a true crime junkie. Oh, uh, okay, good. So, yeah, so it, I just heard about it and it was something that as, as it came closer, um, we just kept talking about it and crossing our fingers and hoping that it worked out. Um, and it did. I, I was on another production um, when we started prep and just jumped right onto Candy. Um, and oh my gosh, I can't, I honestly just can't say enough good about it. It's been an absolute highlight of my life and my career and everything. So. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so this is the project that was executive produced by Jessica Beale. So it was first Elizabeth, were you on the project when it was going to be Elizabeth Moss? And then can you tell me anything about that, that transition? I read in the trades that it was a schedule conflict. And so then Jessica came on and, and yeah, that's how that happened. I think my deal closed right as the transition happened. So mm -hmm. initially, you know, when I had heard about it, it was Elizabeth Moss. Got and, it. Uh, yeah, and then once my deal closed, I, I got wind of it, uh, that it had switched to Jessica. 
She's incredible. I mean, as you know, so surprisingly amazing. I mean, I know she's such a great actress, but this character is so interesting because she's just not what she seems in any way at all, right? Like her sexual appeal and like her desires are just shocking to me. I had, I just couldn't believe the person that we were seeing and she just did such a great job with it. Did, 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 when you were developing the look, it's so not that. So like, how, how did you guys have conversations about, about this per, was it a perm or a wig? Uh, I mean, so it's a wig um, okay. and it, it, the construction of it uh, is a whole, a whole story in itself, but right. then discussions, um, it, it was with stories that are based on, on something that happened in real life. It's mm-hmm. always for me just doing the best we can to try to match the per, the real person because inevitably there are going to be some real life factors that you may have to work around. So I always strive for as close to perfection as we can get mm-hmm. because I have, you know, maybe just a few little tweaks that we need to make. And we did do that with Jessica's look, just with the, the overall shape and where it sat on her face and all of that. We weren't you know, directly like photo matching every curl. Uh-huh. Um, we we worked towards you know getting a really strong match to Candy's Candy's hair, but then we have to get it on Jessica and make sure that it it blends with her face. And there are so many little details when you're working with wigs to making sure that it's not just this thing sitting on top of their head. That is so, always the problem, isn't it? It can look like like. Um, it doesn't move and it's just, that's when it becomes like a clown wig. Right. So did you try, what's that? Especially with curly wigs, making sure that realistic is, is a whole thing. (laughs) I was thinking that the whole time I was thinking, cause when I had my own unfortunate perms in like sixth grade, (laughs) they literally just looked like a hat, you know, and this, this really moved. And I mean, I was just so surprised that it, didn't you think it was funny that her hair wasn't like long and flowy or more, more sexual or something being that she has all this in her? I mean, she's, it was so interesting in such a juxtaposition of who she is. Well, I think that there were some small, some small tweaks that Jessica made to make the character her own to ah. that kind of play. Like, I think, and this is something she could speak to a little bit better than I could, but but just to to bring the note up a little bit where she p- kind of played up that playfulness in Candy and all that, which is what I think gave the show something really special and a good, a good contrast to the dark subject matter to where there are moments that feel very uplifting. Oh, um, yeah, totally. As far as, as the real Candy Montgomery, I, I think that she, from what I know, she was a little bit more stoic. Mm. Um, and, and that may be part of it too, but what I love about how the look came together for Jessica as well is that it, it really helps pull her into looking like an everyday person because she's so gorgeous that, you know, <laughs> it's like, can't put, can't put makeup on her or, or anything because she is gorgeous. Um, totally. So I, I really loved that the styles were, were so just conservative Texas. Yes. So what were some key elements that made you, that did you ever like pull back on anything? Did you say, this isn't going to work? We're not going to be able to put mascara on you, for example, or, or anything like that? That all fell into the, into the makeup department. Um, right. Of course. I, yes. Mm-hmm. We, we, for hair, um, luckily, because we were working with wigs have full creative freedom, which was, I, what is what I love so much about them. Mm. But with me, there were things like that. And that's what Jessica came in asking for too, is that she didn't want to wear hardly any makeup at all. Yeah. Um, and she's, she's someone who really is all there for the character, not clinging to her own vanity or anything like that. Like she's all in to, to make the character come to life in the most gritty and real way possible. Except um, for when she was playing volleyball or was it volleyball? I was like, um, <laughs> you're going to bring this whole look back right now. <laughs> Oh my God, that was my favorite scene. <laughs> oh, good. So good. I've known too that she fought to be sure that she had those panty lines going on. <laughs> and it's what I think about her. We were on set and she said, wait, 
shouldn't I have some panty lines? And they brought had to bring in some underwear for her to make sure she had her panty lines. Probably one of my all-time favorite things about her. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Oh my God. She, every detail was incredible. And the, I mean, the art direction, holy smokes. I just kept saying to my husband, like, I think they found my house. This is my house that I grew up. That's the dinner plate that I had every night. These, the Tupperwares that snap and they hurt actually, because they're so tough. You know, those Tupperwares, I was like, this is my whole life. Um, so let's talk about pa- Pablo Schreiber and, um, the, um, and Melanie Linsky. So developing their looks, how, anything you wanted to say about that, the, the, um, the wig, that was a wig for Melanie. Yes. And I, I looked up the original person, exact match. Amazing. But again, the movement was all there and she really looked like she lived in this hair and nothing looked costumey at all. I'm so impressed. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, and I really need to credit to our, we had several fantastic wig makers on this, but Stacey Butterworth did a uh, Candy's wig and Melanie's wig or Betty's wig. Um, and I have to attribute so much of that to hair selection. Um, mm. And so when, when you're making a wig, it's like, especially with the curly wigs too, if the hair is very coarse, it'll be a little bit more stiff and it'll be hard for us to work with. Okay. Uh, you know, I will attribute a lot of that movement and natural look on Candy and Betty's wigs to the fact that the hair was really fine. Um, That's the trick. Oh. Sure that we leave that movement in there and we don't force the style into it. You need to give it a good cut and all that too. But uh-huh. it's like the foundation for us to work with there was right from the beginning because she did such, she selected such great hair for us. So the hair um, selection comes first, or the shape, the the shape, or the um, hair selection. The, the hair selection comes first in the construction of the wig. So, uh, so yeah, she, she built both those wigs for us and then they come with, you know, kind of a long loose shape that we have to all cut or sometimes we'll do color adjustments or, or things like that to pull it into the character. Um, but yeah, she's the one that went through and tied every little hair into that cap by herself. So. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. So yeah, the, the hair being fine and high quality is really important Important. to me. Um, and with Betty's, especially, it gave me a really good canvas to work with. Uh, and then also just Melanie being such an incredible match for Betty. (laughs) Oh my God. We didn't really have to change the style much because it just, it worked on her and she just, she just looks so much like Betty uh the the shape of that haircut is one that I love because in the hairdressing world it's actually a pretty high brow haircut you know you're right (laughs) when I did my I did my cutting training through the vest the Sassoon um academy curriculum and that's I was in advanced training for five years and that's the very last cut in your training that you test out on because it's (laughs) the most advanced <laughs> you know to the to the layman it's like oh it's like a bowl cut shape but but to hairdressers we like put this cut on a pedestal <laughs> so I, I love dying <laughs> I I was thinking the whole time I know this this is very chic actually and you're so right I mean it was iconic I mean because especially because it was long right that's harder did it did it curl under at the end it's we call it a bevel it's a little bevel, bevel and that's it's something that that you put in there with the way that you cut it and that's what makes it so highbrow is that you know like says soon in the 60s kind of revolutionized this geometry that you can cut into the hair to make sure it falls effortlessly into the shape that you're going right. for to and so that cut and Dorothy Hamill is someone that made that cut really popular although Betty's was a longer version of it but Dorothy Hamill is one that everybody thinks about I um, ter- wanted to kill Dorothy Hamill because my mother would just march me into the salon and go she wants the Dorothy Hamill I never wanted the Dorothy Hamill no. No. I mean when, when I was testing out for it in in class we were told to just go try to find old ladies because it's usually older <laughs> ladies Hairstyles. And they'll usually do the shorter, more Dorothy Hamill oh, yeah. kind of style. But not but the yes, cool around. one. Not the cool no. one. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then I noticed that you even, you even with Candy's wig, you would have um, like stray hairs here and there, like, like there'd be a straight one, you know, like, so it would look like she didn't do it, but, but how did you make it wet? Like after the murder and how did you make oh. her hair wet like that? I loved her wet look so much. Yeah. Um, Part of that too is that when Stacy made the wig, she she did a pseudo perm on it where she added a little bit of texture to the hair that stays in there. Um, but wow. she didn't take it all the way to the curly look because we wanted to be able to go back and forth with the blowout for the courtroom with the curly style. But luckily we did have that little bit of texture in there so that when I got it wet, it didn't just fall bone straight. Are you um, telling and from me there, this, is, this is one wig, Katie? There was one wig. We had a second just in case we needed it, but it's so nice to work with the same one that we, we were able to make it all happen with that one wig. And I just had the other one on standby in case we needed it. I'm in shock right now. This wig needs its own award. Th that is yeah. crazy because it was, can leave you blew it out for the court scenes then. Yep. And wow. that can lead me into one of my crazy stories is that it, it's like, no, you know, we do this for a while. You do, you get pretty good at, at um, identifying potential fires and preventing them, you know, so you can make sure everything runs smoothly. Well, we had a day where, um, and from the beginning, I let them know, like, this is a big style change. It's pretty easy for us to go from curly to the blown out look. That's a 20 minute change for us. Okay. We can do it very quickly. Um, but to go from the blown out look to the curly look, it was a whole roller set. Like I had to take the wig off of Jessica for that roller oh. set. Right. Um, and I just, I let them know, like, we have this other wig on standby if we need it, but we would love to stick with our hero wig. Cause it was just gorgeous. And it, it stayed, you know, kept us in the, in the realm of the character. And, um, so we did our best to make sure that we didn't have to to do that straight to curly change within the schedule. But we did end up with one scene on a day where we had, or no, we ended up with a day where we had to start with it in the curly look. Okay. Blow it out into the straight look and then go back to the curly look. And I was so bound and determined to stick with this same <laughs> wig just because it was, so, it was so good. The other one was great too, but it's like when you have one that you've done all these like, details to and everything to make it perfect you know we wanted to stick with that one so what I did is that I went and I bought a power bank to put in my car so that I could get Jessica's wig off then they had to move all our trailers we had a company move in the midst of this they they could move all our trailers I could set the wig and I had her wig drying under a portable hood dryer in my car while I drove to our next location no and it it worked all worked without a hitch. <laughs> and where did you shoot? Where did you, where were you shooting? Um, well, we started at, at the stages. So we had our first change there from the curly look to the blown out style. Um, and then they, they wanted to take our hair and makeup trailer a little early. So I just had a tiny little um, dressing room with to go where I took her off and I put this set in. And then I'm trying to rem I can't remember. <laughs> where the last set was that we went to it might have been the hotel or something like that but it was we just had to be on location for that last scene so I I managed to find a way to get that that curly style back in and without it <laughs> without it affecting production at all like yeah. it went on without a hit no one, no knew. one was it all worked perfectly <laughs> oh my god you're amazing you are amazing I anything for the shot y'all yes 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 indeed where's the wig now I feel like you have a bond for you're not letting anybody have that wig ever again this is your best friend unfortunately the wigs have to get packed into a box and Aww. they have to go sit in storage um Jessica honestly wanted to keep it, it I was like I feel I'm so sure. bad packing because it became such a part of her Aww. I was like I wish you I want you to keep it but yeah they have to keep it just in case we need to do reshoots or or anything like that of hopefully course. someday it can come storage and it can have something um, <laughs> oh they're gonna say no there's not gonna be candy the sequel you can have the wig <laughs> we could talk a little bit more about betty i know i got sidetracked oh yes no i took you off i i got you sidetracked yes tell me more about betty 
Um, and so with Betty, with Betty's look, um, when Melody came in, she, she was actually really dedicated to the role to a point of wanting to use her own hair. Oh, uh, we're kind of on standby. There's always the rush in the beginning to make sure we get the wig maker a heads up to give them time to make the wigs. And we're kind of getting into, the, into that window where we're like, oh, we got to make a decision soon. Um, and Melanie was all in, but she she had a, another amazing show that she's a part of uh, that that they were nervous to have her. Oh, her for, for Yellow Jackets. Mm -hmm. Yellow Jackets. Um, and in the end, they, they just felt nervous about the time sure. frame. Um, so we ended up going with the wig and I'm glad, so glad we did. Right. It, it would have been lovely to use her hair, but, but also it's so nice to just have this thing we can just put on in the morning and all of that. But, um, and what I loved too, is that Melanie came in and really had thought about the little details of Betty's day. And, uh, you'll see in some of the photos of Betty that she had a little cowlick in her hairline. Mm. And so her would split. And that was something we, we all really came in wanting to keep. Cool. Um, but we thought about times at which maybe she had taken the time to blow that out in the morning. Uh, and we would kind of work it in where you'll see like in some of the school scenes that Calic yeah. is blown out by her full fringe. But then towards the end of the day, as she's home, if she's been cleaning yeah. or something like that, we would kind of make that Calic start to creep back in. No, I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not kidding that I noticed this. I noticed this. So when she would be coming out of the bathroom and fighting a little bit, that would be like, yeah, a little bit as a cowlick haver myself, I did notice. <laughs> My love language to the viewers, you know, all these little details. Yeah. Of that, you know? yes. But yeah, like I, I started saying, I was like, that cowlick needs its own number on the call sheet because we, I had, you know, I do my detailed breakdowns, but with that cowlick, like I, I thought so much about every moment of Betty's day and where she, she would have her cowlick in there. Cause she's not worried about her hair. Right. 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 She would have right. So, so yeah, we, we kept that and it felt just really nice to maintain that piece of the real Betty there. Um, and then other little things like uh, when we were trimming Melanie's fringe, she was, she's like, I feel like Betty would have really taken it kind of above her eyebrows to make sure it stays out of her eyes. Mm -hmm. And we were just picturing her maybe in the mirror, like with a little cuticle scissor trimming her own fringe or something. Totally. Like that. Um, so, and I, I noticed too that Betty, when she was younger, her graduated bob was was shorter and it was perfect. It looked very much like Dorothy Hamill's hair. Mm -hmm. But then as she got older, it almost looked like she might she may have been doing some maintenance herself on her hair because it starts to get a little bit lopsided and yeah. it kind of oh, that's so cool. So that's why you know there are certain little elements where we didn't want it to be totally perfect. We yeah. wanted it to of her real life and the details that may that probably were there yeah. um and I really appreciated seeing kind of seeing that visual timeline um throughout all of her photos wow and then so how many days how many how many weeks did you guys shoot this oh that's a good question um I want to say it was it was a little over four months total Oh, wow. That's so long. So then, and then did you, you obviously there's so many time jumps and so much. So for example, you're dealing with what you dealt with your superhero moment of having the wig <laughs> go through three stages and Melanie day to day. I mean, the time jumps are just crazy. And how, how do you organize that as a, like in your department, how do you organize do you have any say about how it will ever be shot? Uh, it depends if if the changeover time that I that would be necessary uh -huh. is so good that it would really affect our day. Then it's something that I will bring up to production and say, you know, it may it may be beneficial for us to think about restructuring the scene order. Um, overall, I do my best to not do that because there's so many factors going into the way the schedule is structured sure. that I'm not create problems for something that we might be able to find a solution for. Um, but they definitely are open to hearing that because if if we're trying to just jump over hurdles that are going to potentially cause us a delay in the day, they don't want that either. Um, so they definitely, you know, with the wig, with the full style change and all of that wanted to hear um, what we would be dealing with. Um, but 
when I get the scripts, I do my script breakdown and then I always do a really detailed breakdown of every single scene and each character. And it's a whole crazed like thing. Um, but that way I can quickly reference which scene we're working on and what looks each character has. And I usually do a plan, you know, for the next day, what we've got coming up. Um, and as this, as the schedule comes together in our production meetings, mm -hmm. there are moments at which I can, I can spot potential problems and either find a solution on our end or suggest that maybe we restructure the schedule a little bit. So there's a, there are ways, ways for us to avoid that. But in the situation that I just told you about, it was one where we kind of had to make a last minute schedule change. Ah. Due to other so they did a lot to help us out in that department where they tried to keep all the courtroom scenes together in one day. Right. I was wondering about uh, that. But we just ran into some some issues. That, I don't remember exactly what it was. It may have been a location issue or something like that, where we just had to shoot that one scene that day. Ah, uh, um, got it. You know, we just had to do what we could do to make sure that it all worked flawlessly, which is what we like to do. Um, well, it all looked flawless, even the blood in the hair. And which brings me to, you must have had a lot of experience with dealing with hair and blood from your creep show background, right? We, it was so funny. My husband and I just watched the original the other night, the original creep show. I mean, <laughs> but, so this is quite the different experience, but you must have a lot of experience with, did, did you do more horror or anything after that? Or was creep show kind of your... I mean, it it doesn't get much much farther into the horror department than creep show for me. <laughs> <laughs> Coming out um, later on this year, called my best friend's exorcism right after creep show actually too, but but yeah, with creep show it's like we're working. I'm working with Greg Nicotero who worked on the original creep shows Gosh. and is horror aficionado and all of that. So um, I definitely got my feet very wet on Creepshow. But what I loved about working on that is that it's anthology. So every episode, we have a completely new story. And it honestly prepared me for anything because sometimes we were doing strong per period looks um, or monsters or whatever. And, and we're working on such a short time frame that you've really got to have your gears oiled and um, be ready to work on, on the, at the drop of a hat. Uh, yeah. so I always say that about creep show. It's like, nothing will phase me after, right. <laughs> after making it into that. Dumping um, you in the ocean with no life vest. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. And you're like, oh, so. Wow. <laughs> so, our, our blood work and all that was great. And Greg Nicotero actually did the, um, the murder scene for us. He made the Betty body and he did all the blood work. So we got to have a little reunion and I got to help make Betty's bloody hair look just right and all of that. I, I so was going to ask nice you about that. I, I, that's awesome. I was going to ask you about that specifically because a lot of our um, listeners are like in the industry and I wanted to explain how you work, what departments all work together in a scene like that. So when she's touching her hair and sees the blood, um, you know, on it in that first episode and, you know, that's two departments, right? You work together on that. You agree of, about how you're going to do it, right? We do. Yeah. And, and I definitely, I think I have my hands in the blood and effects work more than a lot of people do just because I, yeah. I love it. I love that world. And because thankfully I've been able to work with such great effects artists over the course of my career that I learned how to work well with them to make sure that we can complement each other. Um, so for the shower scene where she, she finds the cut on her head, the, those, those smaller effects, we call them out of kit effects. Um, those are handled by the, the, the straight beauty makeup department. They do the minor I effects see. like that. So Essie Cha was our department head um, for makeup. And she would go in and apply Candy's little cut each day. A lot of days it was there, but you never see it because it's in her hair. But we always put it there. Um, and then when she sees the blood in the shower, I'm there to, uh, to you know keep the hair out of the way while they're applying. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that everything blends together how it should. Uh, so we're, we're really taught not to cross lines. So makeup knows to never touch the hair. I'll be there. I'll be there when they need me to make sure it's not in their way so they right. can do their work. And I'll, I'll place it over where it needs to be. And 
So we learn how to kind of do that little dance with each other. So in a scene like that, there's hair on set, watching the monitor, there's hair, makeup, sp- effects, or you're, you're saying that you would do effects? There, there's hair, makeup, and makeup effects. Got it. Okay. And then special effects, which is a totally different thing. Yeah. But- effects is is Greg Nicotero he's the one that right. that made the Betty body and did all the he does all the more extreme things if there's prosthetics involved mm-hmm. and things like that um but if it's something small like a scar or a scratch or something like that the the straight makeup department will will um take care of it got it thank you so much for explaining all that because I always I always wonder about it and then sometimes art department's thrown in there too so it's just like yeah. yep it's a, but it's yeah, a, if if anything crosses into this world, I'll handle I'll handle the blood and all that there. <laughs> I see. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. It's amazing. So Candy is coming out on May 9th and it's going to be on Hulu, which is my very favorite streaming service <laughs> because they always do the best job of these. And these people are from the act, right? Which um, this is the same team from the act, which was brilliant. Amazing. Yeah. The- are from the act yep nick headland or uh, nick and costa and alex headland uh were that. and then you're um, working on their new their latest project right now too that's amazing yeah also true crime also set in the 70s and so that's part of why i wanted to jump on it too i just had such a good time i was like let's keep this train moving um, that's great and we also have our, our showrunner and writer Robin Veith and um, Michael Appendall is one of our producers and he directed two of our episodes um, so Robin Robin was the one that I think Robin and Michael were probably the ones that I dealt with the most on candy okay uh, honestly I cannot speak more highly of the two of them uh, Robin's Rob when Robin sent me the scripts she had I told her she had me from the tone notes because just the tone notes in the pilot she referenced David Lynch Uh, and I just I'm just like anyone that will help me preserve that man's work somehow um um, so her her tone note was that the overall feel of the town should feel something like the scene where you see Laura Palmer's ceiling fan (gasps) just yes like that um Oh my gosh. And she just had me head over heels, even from that moment. But when I went through the rest of the scripts, it was like, it was just the perfect emotional roller coaster. You know, it was like, I felt exactly what I needed to feel at every single moment. And it was just so beautifully written. Um, and then beyond that into filming, just the way that she ran things, the way that she, her and Michael supported us as a department. Mm. Uh, on every step of the way it was just the the ball was never dropped not once on that end so I can't speak really of of the two of them and our entire production crew it's so So. well done and I mean to make this woman is like obviously there's just something that sucks you right in and you're just riveted the whole time she's so full of like obviously the big surprise that you know the murder but like her personality was just so full of surprises and I, I loved it. I loved it. I thought you did an amazing job. Everybody was incredible. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's, it was a blessing. Our, our whole, you know, AD department, PAs, everyone was really not only experienced and good at their jobs, but also just at the top of their game. Mm. When we could just tell that everyone showed up every single day bringing everything that they had because everyone cared so much about the project and it it brought us to a point where not only was our work strong and our days our days flowed just the way they should but also there was just this upbeat tone to the day every single day because everybody just just showed up with their a-game and you know Um, when you know when you're making something that's gonna be like knock it out of the park yeah yeah we could tell it was special from day one and, and, and that never lagged because people are tired or anything. It's like that, right. that high note maintained the whole way through. And I keep saying that that show is just a unicorn in that department mm. because like, I, I feel like you just never see that where, where there's never really a bad day. Like I went, <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling great every single day. So. And you're talking about four months. So that yeah. is a, a huge accomplishment. 
<laughs> yeah. When you find like something like that, I see why you never want to let it go. So I'm glad that you're back with them again. All right, Katie. Well, thank you so much. I know everybody's going to watch and I will put in the show notes how to watch this on Hulu and I will put how to, you have an Instagram. Yes. I do. Yes. Yeah. Ballard here. Design. Great. So everybody will follow you and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And I'm looking forward to watching with everyone. My pleasure. Look Behind the Look is a Vinyl Foot production written by me, your host, Tiffany Bartok. Produced by Jace Bartok, edited by Nicole Tucker, with art design by Kelly Riley. If you're interested in learning more, find our video version on the YouTube channel, Look Behind the Look podcast. There you can see rare photos and clips from our guests. And please follow us on Twitter at Look Behind Pod and Instagram at Look Behind the Look. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. And tell your friends and spread the word. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or any podcatcher of your choice. Thanks for listening to Look Behind the Look.